everyone welcome back to my channel um, my name is Sarah if you're new here welcome so today we're going to go through and do my first plant haul actually and I have been to the nursery recently got a few plants mostly cactus and a couple like one or two succulents um, so I figured we go through there's about 10 in all and I've done some research on them so we're just gonna go through and talk about each plant so let's go ahead and get started okay so the first plant I have is, it is so, look at him, so cute. Elianopsis shunisi. It is in the kind of lithops family from South Africa. So this little guy, he's a, he clumps. He's from, like I said, South Africa. They're actually from the tip of South, Af South Africa along the Cape um, in very obviously dry conditions. And what I really like about this, doing my research, is you can actually bonsai this little guy up. I'm going to insert a picture and show you what my goal for this little guy is. But they're really slow growers too, though, so it's probably going to take a while. Um, but you can actually bonsai. They get a little codex, and you can bonsai it up and make it look like a little tree. So I'm really excited about that. These are winter growers, um, so we're definitely getting into the growing season of it when they do flower. They do need more light during the winter time to get them to flower. So you want to make sure you put them in a bright area. If you're going to bring them indoors, you know, put them in a bright area indoors. For me, I can leave them outside all winter long. They are fairly frost hardy for the most part. Um, they can get down to about, they can handle down to about 23 degrees Fahrenheit, negative five Celsius. So um, they'll be fine outdoors for me in San Diego might not be for other parts of the country where it does get colder than that. So you will want to bring them inside. But if you do want them to be able to flower and get the best growth, you will want to keep them in a fairly well lit area. Um, during the summer time, you do want to protect them from the heat. So you don't want them to be in full sun during the summer if you get really hot wherever you might be at. But as far as water goes, you can regularly water them during the summer time. You just want to make sure they um, stay completely dry and you only water them once they've dried out all the way. But during the winter time, you don't want to water them at all. They are summer dormant and they do want to be watered in the summer time, but not in the winter time. Uh, next plant we have is the, isn't he so cute? The Shawantazia Borsha Dursi or Borsha Dursi eye, kind of depending on how you want to say it. I'm not sure which, not quite sure which way is the right way. But look at him, so cute. Kind of like a, in the, definitely still in the list of ice plant family. Let's go ahead and learn some cool stuff about this little beauty. Okay, so this little guy, I got on the discount bargain bin for like 50 cents. So he's missing a little a piece of him there, but that's okay. So really cute. He is the um, Shawantazia Borsidursi. He's a Mizambethium, like a Lithops family. Um, very similar also from the, the um, previous plant is he's also a winter grower from South Africa, the Northern Cape province of South Africa to be exact. And during, in, in that area, it's actually one that gets one of the lowest rainfall in the region of South Africa. Also like the previous plant, he also is a winter grower and needs um, some light too in order to flower during the winter. So you definitely don't wanna put him in shade during the winter if you wanna get some flowers from him and get his best growth possible. Um, he can tolerate down to about freezing, so 30 degrees. Um, and as far as water goes, he um, prefers water in the fall, springtime, minimum water in the summer. So kind of a little bit different than the previous plant, but um, I will say in general, with my experience with lithops in general, while you can water them from time to time, it seems better to just leave them alone and don't pay much attention to them. They do well with forgetfulness. Okay, well, moving away from South Africa, we're now in the country of Argentina. So we have this. How awesome is he? Look at that guy. Just, just, just check him out. So all the little spines, they're not actually spines. They're like paper spines. Like you're not really, they're a little pokey, but they're more called paper, they're papery spines. Therefore, he's actually called the <laughs> paper spine cactus shockingly so look at him so uh, I want to name him something fun like Einstein or something he looks smart and intelligent just uh, he's just so cool so let's go learn some really neat stuff about him okay so this little guy from the information I could find he supposedly grows in the spring but even then it says he rarely, he's a very slow grower. He rarely flowers, which I figure, you know what? Who needs flowers when you have like 
this. This is so, so cool. Um, but anyway, he rarely flowers and he can handle high heat extremely well, which makes him very good if you want to do some zero scaping um, in your yard. So he'd be perfect for zero scaping. He needs full sun and he also does not handle the frost very well. So he does not like the cold. He's all about the heat. So um, if you do live in colder climates, definitely want to bring this little guy in for the winter. But other than that, I just think he is so cool. He's definitely one of my favorite ones I got on our little journey. So he is a member of the Puntia family also. You can tell with how he kind of does that same, like all the little Puntias, they just keep going up and up and up, branching off. But so there is your um, paper spine cactus. Does not handle the cold very well. Slight growing in the springtime and prefers high heat, but definitely a great plant to bring indoors and grow inside. Okay, so we're still in Argentina. Our next little plant is the, so cute. It's the orange, it's the crested version of the orange cob cactus. But he's crested, so let me just look at, so cute, I love him. And a little spiny, obviously. Okay, so this little um, orange cob cactus, also known as Oblivion cactus, but this is the crested version. This is the Lobivia fementimensis uh, cristata. It flowers in the spring and summer months. Like I said, it is still from Argentina, but unlike the paper spine cactus, this little guy can definitely handle frost. So he can handle down to about 15 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 10 degrees Celsius. He um, also, you wanna keep him dry during the winter time, so no water during the winter. Um, he also can handle full sun to afternoon shade. So you do want to give him plenty of light as well. Um, cause, but also not during the shade, during the afternoon time when it's the most hot, they do tend to burn. So you don't want full sun. Um, is a slow grower. He does, um, flower in the spring and summer months and keep him dry during the winter time. Here's him. And he is spiky for sure. Look at that. So cute. I don't think the crested version gets this orange. Let's see here. This write up technically says it only gets six inches in height. This is a cristata form with dark green fan shaped stems that are tinged purple and bright light protect from frost. Okay. So moving on from what country is this in? Okay. So moving on from Argentina, we are now going to Brazil. So this little guy is so cute. This little guy right here is the Milo Cactus Azurus because he's blue, which is why I got him because I absolutely adore blue cactus. I just, they are one of my favorites. Definitely a little spiky. Don't want to sit and hug him. He is not in the petable succulent family. This little Milo Cactus Azurus from Brazil He's a little bit more of a uh, frost tender, a little bit more tropical than the other cactus. He can handle, he can get down to about 30 degrees, but he really prefers 50 degree temperatures Fahrenheit. So definitely need to bring him in if you are during the winter time. He um, is part of the Turk, the Turk's cap genus where they get those little woolly tips where the spikes are coming from. So that's where their, um, the dome of wool is. They flower from that area as well, which I think is super cute. I love all, the, I love blue cactus and I love woolly cactus. So this is like a combination of both of my favorite parts of cactus. Um, they don't, they do like a little bit more water than your average cactus. So even during the winter time, um, they do prefer, they don't be completely dry. So you can give them a little bit of water during the winter and they don't want to be completely dried out. They do like to be kept in small containers um, to help keep them from rotting. So definitely don't, you know, put them in a huge, large container, keep them the container about the size of the cactus. And um, they really do love sun. So you can definitely give them lots of light. They'll be really happy about that. They do have a fairly long flowering season. They'll flower from spring to autumn, supposedly. So that's kind of interesting. And, um, yeah, so just give him a little bit more water than most of your other cactus and make sure he doesn't get too cold. But other than that, really cute little cactus from Brazil.
Okay, well, bye bye Brazil. We are now in Mexico and we have this. I love this. He's so cute. So this is a white ghost organ pipe, also known as, of course, another really long name, the uh, Stenoceras prunusos. But I just love the color of it. See how it's kind of got that nice white ghosty color. Nice little spikes. Also don't want to hang out with it. Okay, so this little gray ghost organ pipe from Mexico, he's kind of a high heat cactus for sure. He really loves to just hang out outside in the full sun and have a good time. If you are going to bring him indoors, you wanna make sure that you put him in a very well lit area because he does need lots of light. If you're gonna put him outdoors, he can definitely handle full sun all day long. If you are in a cooler climate, you definitely won't want to be bringing him in during the winter because he does not handle the cold very well at all. He can get extremely big. I will not be putting this in the ground. I found some pictures of what they look like out in the wild and they are insane. They can get up to six feet tall, a maximum of 16 to 20 feet, which I do not want this getting that big in my yard. So he's going to be staying in a nice cute little pot. But how cute is he? I just... Look at that, so cute. And I just love that color. Um, as far as water goes, he likes water best during the winter, summer, I'm sorry. So he, and he is also a summer grower. Um, he does flower February through May and also into September sometimes. And he does produce fruit. So that's kind of cool. Um, he is winter dormant and he does need full sun for growth. So like I said, if you are gonna, wherever you do plant him, whether you're keeping him indoors or you're putting him outside in your landscape, you wanna find the sunniest spot possible for him if you want him to reach his full potential. Okay, and then finally, last of our cactus, also from Mexico, is this really cute, in the Mammillaria family, he's known as a bird's nest Mammillaria. Technically, it's the Mammillaria camptotrica. So let's try. He's very spiny, not something you want to touch, but also just really cute. He um, grows, they grow in clumps. So I think he'll look really cute if he just kind of clumps out a little bit. But look at that. He did, they don't flower very much. They said they have insignificant flowers, but he was flowering when I first uh, got him. So I don't know if you can see that little flower he has. So they have the flowers are inside and they're just little white flowers. So if you want like something that does a lot of flowering, this is not one of them, but I just think he's really cute. I like the little specks he's got going on. This little Mammillaria camp, Camptotricia or bird's nest is like I said, from Mexico. He does, he's a late summer, early fall grower, uh, flowers mostly in the summertime. He really prefers bright, even light to encourage tight growth and flowering. But during the hot summer, you do want to protect him from the sun because he will burn if you don't do that. So you definitely give him maybe a little bit of shade cloth during the summer. Um, overall, I didn't find any great um, watering habits for him. So I would say just water him like a normal cactus, which is not a lot of water. <laughs> anyway, but I'm really just like his... The spine's not as much, but his inner texture, I think, is super, super cool. Um, those little flowers, he was flowering when I first bought him. They are, they're little white flowers, fairly insignificant, but I still think they're cute. So, yeah, he's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to plot him up. Okay, so I have this cute little aloe here. He is also back to South Africa. We go. We're going all over the world today. Anyway, so this little guy can get not so little. He's actually one of the fastest growing of the aloes. They're called um, the climbing aloes. He can get up to, I think I read like, yeah, 8 to 12 feet tall, which if you have a nice big yard, I guess this is a nice place to put somebody like him. Yeah, 8 to 12 feet tall. He's definitely not that tall right now. This was a little 50 cent guy I got at the, the bargain area of the nursery, but super cute. Um, you know, I love aloes. They're really easy. They grow like crazy here. Don't have to give them a lot of water. So this little climbing aloe, um, like I said, you don't need to give a lot of water. It's really great for zero scaping in the yard. If you need a large area that you want to plant and don't want to have to worry about watering at all. Um, it can resist soft frost. So this is perfect for San Diego, um, especially East County where we do get some frost here. So this is perfect for 
my terrain for sure. And uh, yeah, just don't want 12 feet of aloes. So you definitely need to keep on it. So prune it a little bit. And like I said, it's one of the faster of the aloes. So definitely need to keep on him, but super cute. And for 50 cents, why would you not want to get him? Okay, so my last little plant is a Haworthia. Um, the Haworthia tenuata, also known as the zebra plant. I know people ha have lots of these. Um, it's interesting when I was doing research about this particular plant, I have quite a few of them in different pots everywhere. And it was saying that it's a really slow grower and it's really hard to get offsets, which I have not found to be true. They seem to just put it in a little pot and next thing you know, you go back and it's got two or three or four or five of them. But um, I think Haworthias are so awesome. They don't need as much sun. You can definitely handle them in a shady area. They're great to actually grow in the house even. Um, I've had some that I just stick in the patio, which is super dark, my front patio, and forget all about it. And next thing I know, I go out there and there's like, you know, two or three plants on top of it. But Haworthia attenuata, I definitely recommend getting one of these, especially if it's your first time to succulents, plants in general, and you want something that you won't kill. I feel like these are really hard to kill. So, <laughs> you know, and they're just really fun and they can handle the shade. And yeah, I highly recommend them. Worth the attenuata. So cute. Okay, and now let's get to this guy in the back, which I'm super excited about. Well, so this guy is a Pacopodium. I had a little tiny one but it's gonna take forever to get this big. And he was $18 and I said, you know what? I could wait forever for my $5 pack of podium to turn into this, or I could just get a bigger one. So, and then he's got little babies coming there too. So check him out. I'm very excited. Um, during the winter, they lose all their leaves. Okay, so look at him. So awesome. So this little pacopodium from Madagascar or South Africa also, he's in a more tropical area. He does actually like a little bit more water than most other succulents and cactus. Even though he has all these, he's very similar to the cactus with his spines, but then he does get these leaves. He won't keep these leaves all year long. Um, I know for me, I have a little pacopodium outside and he loses his leaves during the winter time. And as the temperatures start warming up, his leaves come back. Um, and for my little guy, I don't like to water him much when his leaves are not on there. And then as their growing season increases, that's when they need more water. They can actually grow fairly quickly during their growing season. So you do want to keep them not, you know, don't drench them as much as like a regular plant. But I would say water them like a succulent. When they're completely dry, give them some water. They do store all of their water in their trunk. So... Um, you definitely want to make sure that you don't give it over water because they too tend to have rot if you give them too much water, especially during the winter. They do not like the cold. Um, they can only handle down to about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So this will definitely be an indoor plant, even for me sometimes during the um, summer, during the winter time, if I know we're going to get down to freezing, I'll bring my plant inside or at least put it on the outside patio in the front yard where we'll have some protection from frost and cold temperatures but other than that i just think he's a really cool plant and i'm really excited to see how big he'll get so this was my big purchase of the day look at that um i did notice that he didn't these little leaves are starting to yellow i think i ended up putting him too much in the patio where he wasn't getting enough sunlight because while they do not need direct sunlight they definitely still need sunlight um they get plenty of sunlight in the tropics with some protection from you know too high heats of course but you do want to put him somewhere where he will be getting um, enough sunlight to keep him happy because if they don't get enough um, sunlight they will wither and their branches will get a little weak and then they'll be more prone to insects and rot and whatnot so there we go i'm so excited about him i really like and then i'm really excited once he's get a little bigger i probably will Go ahead and cut these off and then I'll have extra ones because they don't really, they don't have branches like, like a tree. They just come from the roots. You're not going to have a, a branching pack of podium, although that would be pretty cool. Anyway, so there's that. Just 
evening i want to show you guys while i was actually filming this i realized that my lithops outside is blooming so let's go check that out really quick it's such a oh it's been so hot today okay so let's just go look at this little guy there he is the other ones not so much but he's looking really happy oh and then here is the little my little pack of podium different version obviously but cute definitely smaller and a little bit different looking they're all a little different their leaves are all a little different but there's my little pack of podium i have okay well thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed the little um educational plant haul and um, please let me comment below if there's any extra information or something I got wrong because I'm always wanting to learn new things. So please comment below if there's something else that I said wrong or whatever. Anyway, so thanks for watching and we'll guys catch you guys again on the next video. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.